Hey, what's up and welcome everyone to another Warzone video and today we're taking a look at the Season 1 Cold War integration where Cold War, Warzone, Modern Warfare all merge together for Cold War Season 1 and we're going to see how everything's going to change, whether or not the Doof Doof's going to get nerfed, what the new map is going to look like and how it's going to play out, how big the update is and when it's going live. So we've got a lot of information for you as quick as we possibly can. I'll breeze through a lot of the multiplayer and zombie stuff, I don't really care about that too much, but I am going to give you the in-depth details about everything related to Warzone. Uh, and one little thing that you might want a little detail on, that's PlayStation 5 there in the background, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be giving away a PlayStation 5 this holiday season to a member who is following my Twitch and Twitter. Follow my Twitter, and you're going to see a post coming up tomorrow morning explaining how you can win that. So if you want a PlayStation 5, the disc version, make sure to follow me over on Twitter. But without any further ado, these are the patch notes. If you want to see the patch notes played out live, I will be streaming them tonight on Twitch. But here we go. Modern Warfare patch notes. And I'm going to rip off the band-aid right now, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a long patch note ahead of us, but this one's pretty short and sweet. And let me tell you, you're not going to like what you see. Okay. Playlist update. Boots on the ground, war, blueprint, gunfight. That's all from Modern Warfare. I don't really care too much. General fixes. Fix for a bug on Hackney Yard that can prevent Minotaur from performing execution. Don't care. Fixed another bug. Don't care. Here's what we need to look at. Weapons. What is changing in the weapon set? What's getting buffed? What's getting nerfed? We got a long list ahead of us. The Finnick increased damage range that's the super fast fire rate the iso increased damage range one of the worst guns in the game so a couple little buffs there to some smgs and that's it the r90 is not getting touched right now i don't know why i don't know what possibly could be going through the devs minds i usually am pretty forgiving about stuff like this but this is pretty egregious considering how it's been plaguing the gameplay now Something to be hopeful about, something the Infinity War, um, the Treyarch devs, more importantly, the people in charge of Cold War have said, is they're going to keep all of the weapons and all of the modifiers, all of the attachments in the game at the beginning. But later on, they may start vaulting some things. So hopefully, things like Akimbo, things like Dragon's Breath get vaulted in the near future like we see in Fortnite. But on launch night, it's not happening. All right, let's see what else we got. So this is the actual official post right here from infinity ward and we're going to breeze through this as fast as we possibly can this is the biggest drop coming our way and some of the stuff with warzone we're pretty uh, familiar with with warzone the new gulag experience and expanded arsenal check this out so for starters it's all happening tonight december 15th if you want to know the exact time uh, it's later on in one of my next posts so st stand by for that i'll give you the exact time and also file size Without going into all of this, I'm going to get you all the information as fast as you possibly need. Here's the things you need to know. You've got new weapons coming into both Cold War and Warzone. All these are going to be integrated at the start. You've got the new Groza Assault Rifle as well as the MAC-10 SMG. If you're playing Cold War right now, you've probably already been playing with those because those dropped uh, today. Now, you also have a new Operator coming in as part of the Season 1 Battle Pass, uh, Vicor Stitch Kuzman. We saw him in some of the animated trailers. I'm not going to show those because I could uh, get DMCA'd. One thing that's actually really exciting, a lot of us feel like we hit our max level cap in Warzone extremely quickly, and now there is cross-progression with a thousand season levels and new prestiges. So what that means is you're actually going to be able to hit prestiges as you continue to grind. Those of us who are familiar with the Blackout community know that you are actually able to have that and kind of show off how far you could get. Um, unfortunately, in this season, the max you can rank up to is Prestige 7 in Season 1. So I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means in terms of like how high that level will be but season one brings a thousand new levels to climb military ranks with the prestige levels milestones rewards unlocked on the way players can reach up to prestige seven in season one with a title of prestige master waiting at level 200 the race is on like I said if you guys know the prestige system maybe a little bit better than I do I'm not sure exactly what that means with a thousand new levels and maxing out at prestige seven but fortunately, it's something exciting to look into that we're not just playing towards a level 155 and then capping out there. Multiplayer, I'm just going to give you the information as fast as you have. This is really all you need to know. So you have eight additional multiplayer maps, um, 2v2 gunfight, prop hunt, the new harp, score streak, which is basically the, the VSAT or the Black Hawk, which allows you to see enemy where they're aiming and where they're at consistently, and the combined arms hardpoint event this week. So some of the things that you're going to be seeing, obviously we're all familiar with Raid. There's going to be Raid the Mall, Prop Hunt, Nuketown 24-7 Holiday. There's a new map called The Pines, which we also saw uh, along with Raid and the new Nuketown map. 
but I'm not really too worried about that. There is one really unfortunate thing about all you zombies players is your zombies customization actually won't be able to transfer over to Warzone. They sent that out in a tweet earlier today, but the customizations, some of these zombie camos, zombie charms, zombie calling cards, for some reason are not accessible. So if you grinded Dark Aether, you're not going to be able to use it in Warzone for some reason today. There are some additional things coming to, to zombies, though, if you are a zombie player to get excited about. There's a new Jingle Hells holiday mode with some holiday-themed enemies. Um, there's a new weapon support for uh, with the Groza AR Max 10 SMG being added into the mystery box with full attachment rarity. I've actually seen that where whenever you pack a punch your gun, it'll like drop all the individual weapons on the ground so you can pick up your suppressor, your sight, all individually to customize your gun, which would be really nice. But really what we're focused on here is Warzone. This is what this channel is all about. Black Ops Cold War invades Warzone in Season 1 with the addition of 30-plus Cold War weapons in the new Rebirth Island map, launching with the new Resurgence mode at the start of the season. So here's what it is. I was really hoping somehow this would be, you know, maybe the Gulag, and then we'd have some bigger map on top of it, but it seems like they just reskinned Alcatraz with a few new spots and a few new features and depthed it out a little bit. And this is going to be our game mode. And this isn't going to be a full feature war zone mode this is going to be a reduced mode of only up to 40 players drop in with your friends explore the island loot up and emerge victorious as the last team standing now we'll talk about it here in a moment but basically the way the game mode is going to work is you can continue to redeploy redeploy so long as your entire team is still alive up until the last 30 seconds and then you can't redeploy anymore so it's a little bit more fast paced. You don't have to worry, you know, so much about getting in through the gulag and getting back in. Like if you die, you're going to go right back into the map, which could be pretty fun. Uh, there are two new gulags coming to Warzone in both Verdansk and Rebirth Island. If you go down in Verdansk, prepare to be dragged into an interrogation room, strapped to a chair and thrown into an all new gulag inspired by the original Nuketown map layout. During traditional modes later in the season, Rebirth Island, Gulag combatants will face off in a hidden arena located under the prison block. Keep your head on a swivel if you want to make it out alive. Now, you can see a little bit here, basically what the, the new map is going to be for the Gulag is it's going to be like Nuketown, but they're taking away the houses and the backyard, so it's only going to be that middle sector. You can see a little bit of it here in this beginning. You can see, like, the two buses, the two buses, but everything else is fenced off, so it's not the Gulag showers anymore. Additionally, 30 Black Ops Cold War weapons. We were talking about that. Note, at the start of Season 1, a portion of the zombies' personalization content will not be accessible in Warzone, including zombie calling cards, weapon camos, reticles, and onslaught blueprints. So, like I said, if you grind it for the beautiful Dark Aether, it's not happening. If you guys really want to get into the in-depth patch notes, I'm going to provide this in the description as well. But for the most part, a lot of this is kind of in the weeds, queep type of stuff. And we're going to find out more about this as we go on. But I've covered a majority of it. And the summary above covered a lot of it. Some things you might want to look into, though, if you're if you're really, you know, a hardcore player is considering some of the weapon changes. So I do want to cover those real quick. Uh, so you've got the new weapons like the MAC-10 and the Groza. You have the AK-47 has been nerfed it has reduced headshot multiplier which used to be insane and reduced damage for the 20 inch spetsnaz rpk barrel the krieg also has reduced headshot damage the ffar has been rebuffed it was nerfed pretty heavy increased damage range and reduced recoil submachine guns have been buffed the milano or the uzi has increased damage ranges ksp increased damage range and bullfrog increased damage range tack rifles have been nerfed with reduced effective range and fire rate uh same thing with the aug with the reduced headshot multiplier uh, reduce maximum range, reduce fire rate, and reduce damage with a 19.8 task force barrel. Uh, that was the one that upped your damage. Attachments, adjust the barrel attachments that improve fire rates for tactical rifles. So, attack rifles have gotten nerfed pretty hard. Uh, I didn't think they were going to be too viable in Warzone because burst rifles at long ranges tend to have, you know, climb off of targets and then also, like, that interval in between shots can really screw you up. I didn't think they were going to be that viable, but it looks like they've been nerfed even with that in mind. Light machine guns have a faster aim down sight speed now, which seems like the stoner it might be one of the guns to go to, along with the RPK. Uh, increased weapon swap speeds as well. The sniper rifle Charlie, which I believe is the uh, the 50 caliber, has increased damage multiplier for the upper chest to allow for one hit kill without attachments, which always seemed broken to me that it couldn't. Uh, it also allows for one hit kill to the upper arms with the Tiger Team barrel and re adjusted recoil for higher shot power. Magnums are buffed and shotguns are nerfed. So decreased damage range, decreased damage range, decreased damage range, fire rate, and damage range, um, and reduce the amount of player knockback when being damaged by bullet weapons. Uh, also, they reduced flak. That's something to keep in mind. It's basically the equivalent of EOD. Um, so it used to be like it would take 
three Simtexes to kill someone with Flak. Hopefully, they made it to where it's only two, at least for as a competitive player. That would be really frustrating to me to, to not be able to knock that out. Uh, frags are slightly buffed. Molotovs are slightly buffed. And stim shots are slightly nerfed. Some other things in there that aren't really too applicable to us um, on the Warzone side of thing. Uh, like I said, if you want to check out all the nitty gritty details, you can check it out. But one thing you probably are interested in is when is this actually dropping? The actual update drops tonight at 11 p.m. tonight on all platforms. Charlie Intel has crushed it with every single update. In one of the previous ones, I thought that Charlie Intel uh, was wrong, and I thought the Halloween update was going to happen at night because most updates have happened at 11 p.m. to reduce server loads. Um, and Charlie Intel was like, nope. The Halloween update is going to be off. This one's actually going to launch in the morning. And they were right. I was wrong. So I'm trusting Charlie Intel. They have the official. That's what they've posted on all their sources. as 11 p.m. Pacific on all platforms they also did a great job of putting together kind of a um condensed version of everything uh talking about the new gulag talking about the new battle royale experience there are new challenges kind of like they do with all new things where you can there are 16 new challenges uh when you drop into alcatraz or rebirth island and here's the information on how they actually work so you respawn every 30 seconds until the final circle or the last squad is left standing Killing an enemy provides you with extreme clarity on the where the rest of the enemy team is, which I think would be cool for hunting as many people as you possibly can. I know players like, you know, gang and youngsters used to, gangsters, youngsters all used to love to, you know, press through and be as aggressive as possible and like set kill records on this. So I think there'll be some lot, a lot of fun, like kill records being broken, especially with that new mechanic. We've got all the new weapons coming in, uh, the new operators as well with Vargas and Song to accompany Stitch. Uh, there's a new vehicle an attack helicopter which is similar to the relic regular helicopter very similar very similar uh with one major exception uh mounted both side rails with belt fed mini machine guns mini guns so that's awesome too uh progression stuff that we talked about daily challenges and some pretty standard stuff outside of that but ladies and gentlemen that wraps up today's video once again if you want to get yourself a playstation 5 make sure to follow me over on twitter i'll be announcing how to win that tomorrow if you want to catch all this update live i got gigabit internet i'm going to be playing this at launch uh, so make sure to follow me over on Twitch. That's linked in the description as well. And for those of you that are hanging around, you know, Roy, real loyal members of the community, uh, wondering why, where I've been, what I've been up to. Uh, one, I've been pretty, pretty busy with tournaments, playing in a few tournaments like the Code Bowl, playing on behalf of the Air Force, which is a really cool opportunity. Um, but then I've been feeling pretty sick. Uh, I went to get a COVID test. My wife tested positive for COVID. I'm still waiting on my results, but I'm pretty sure I've had it because uh, I've been flat exhausted the last few months um so i appreciate everyone's support appreciate everyone's patience if you want to do me a favor and crush this video with likes because i've been a, been away a just destroy it please if you're here smash that with likes and uh throw a little w in the comment section because i need all your guys help because youtube doesn't like it when you go away for a week so appreciate you guys i'll see you over on twitch and I'll, of course we'll have all the information that you guys need um through live videos throughout the night with the update see you on the next one